Hey there! How's it going out there in uh, Harper Kids land? I am Fred Van Lenty. I'm Ryan Dunleavy. And together we create Action, Action President. The first two of these suckers, in fact, will be out uh, on June 2nd. Um, and today it's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, Ryan. Happy Memorial Day, Fred. How's it going? Uh, it's going good. We're going to spend it the best way we know how, which is creating comics. <laughs> It took us a while, I won't say how long, to make Action Presidents, the the uh, George and Abe and Teddy and, and John at JFK, but uh, we thought for fun, in this short little video, we're going to actually create a brand new Action President story right here in front of your very eyes. I want to make it clear that, that Ryan has never heard what I'm about to tell him to draw. This is going to be totally improvised. It's going to be totally on the cuff. It's going to be totally insane. In fact, it's going to be so insane that in addition to our uh, real history we're going to be doing, uh, there will also be fake jokes. There are, going to, there, are, there are going to be some exciting lies we're going to slip into the story of John Adams just to see if you guys, and Ryan particularly, he'll be mm. sort of the surrogate, you'll be the surrogate of the, of the viewers. Hopefully my hand will crop, cramp up That's in, this, right. in this process. If you do, just start screaming uncontrollably and I'll fall just, off I'll just draw with my, with my mouth. There you go. Well, that, that's great TV. That's great, that's great videoing. There you go. It'll Perfect. Work. Okay, so uh, uh, the subject for today's uh, impromptu action president session is uh, number two, but first in our hearts, Mr. John Adams. Uh, yep, there he is. There he is. There he is. Um, this is the unofficial Action Presidents number five video version, John Adams. So, uh, okay, so Ryan, give me a, bust me out a, a, a clean screen, if you could. Sure. I love the OMGs. Um, and uh, give me a baby in a pilgrim hat. Could you draw me a baby in a pilgrim hat? I think I could do that. Because John Adams was born on October 30th, 1735. He was descended from a uh, proud Puritan stock, and those are the religious sect that made up the Pilgrims, uh, early settlers of New England and Massachusetts and, and thereabouts. And that's why I'm having Ryan draw this cute little baby here in a, uh, in a Pilgrim hat. Although he... uh going to be a little bit of drooly. Well, you, I mean, it's a, it's a cartoon baby. We, yeah. <laughs> a certain degree of drooling is mandatory. Uh, his dad sent uh, John Adams' dad sent him to. Uh, he was descended from Puritans, I should say. Adams is not a Puritan himself. This was the Puritans in the first Thanksgiving were over a hundred years before John Adams was born in 1735. He was sent uh, to Harvard by his dad to become a minister. Although Adams decided he wanted to be a lawyer instead, and in fact, one of his first and most famous clients was fellow founding father John Hancock. He of uh, of signing the, the the Declaration of Independence fame. If you've ever had anybody say, give me a John Hancock, that's why. Ryan, can you give me your John Hancock there? Mine or on, John's? On, on that beautiful, that beautiful uh, drawing. How about yours? This is your John Hancock. Nice. I try to draw as large as possible. That's right, to black out. Fred's name. To block out my name. appear. Exactly. Okay. So that's beautiful, Ryan. Well done. Thank you. Panel one in the in the books. Panel two. Uh, can you give me a ship? Sure. Uh, and can you put put a big pad a big square padlock on it somewhere? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm having Ryan draw this is because Hancock, John Hancock, was a very rich merchant in Boston in the colonial era, and he had a ship called the Liberty. And the Liberty got seized for smuggling. Believe it or not, John H Hancock was an outlaw. He was trying to evade these laws that Parliament had passed over in London, America being part of the British Empire at that point, of course. Uh, and so they added a, the British uh, to raise money after they fought this war with France, known as uh, the French and Indian War here in the U.S., over control of the North American continent. Now, they, they won the British that uh, war, but they went into incredible debt doing so. So to raise money and replenish their treasury, they passed all these taxes that the... Uh, that the colonists, I gotta say, um, they uh, they didn't like very much. Uh, 
the most famous tax was on tea, which is where you got the, the Boston Tea Party, of course, but another one was on wine. And so Mr. Hancock here was smuggling wine in his ship, the Liberty, when the government seized it. And he got hauled into court by the government. And uh, uh, he was uh, uh, defended in court by his lawyer, John Adams, who successfully got John Hancock uh, off. There were uh, riots, actually, in Boston during this time to protest the seizing of the liberty. And, uh, uh, you know, the fascinating thing about these, these, these uh, troops, Ryan... Yes. Uh, was it they were robots? Oh, really? Did you know that that the British uh, Empire had uh, had robots as part of its? Yeah, that's, uh, it's, that's uh, as part of its uh, force. So I was you always hear about technology like years and years after it's uh, actually made. So I, I guess you know that makes sense. Could you could you could you could you do me a, a robot army, Ryan? Sure. Is panel number it's three? The panel two, Liberty. We see we got the name. We got the we got I the have. line. We got the we got the I'm lock. We got the whole nine slight. yards. Robots. So the, the occupying army from Britain and the people of Boston did not, uh, shall we say, get along very well. Uh, in fact, the soldiers were constantly being insulted. The crowds were throwing stuff at them. And tensions finally exploded on the night of March 5th, 1770, uh, when an ice-throwing mob of Bostonians confronted a group of British soldiers uh, who were guarding the hated custom house loyal symbol of Parliament's tax authority. The frightened troops op uh, opened fire, killing five people. Uh, people who were patriots, people who were advocating uh, for the, the voice of America over that of Britain, wasted no time calling this incident the Boston Massacre. The arrested soldiers were arrested and were going to be tried for murder. However, they were defended by their lawyer. Can you guess who that lawyer was? Could it have played John Adams? In fact, Ryan, you are correct, folks at home, that John Adams not only uh, defended Patriot John Hancock, he also defended the British soldiers who were accused of murdering people during the uh, Boston Massacre. And during their trial, Adams successfully argued that the, the soldiers very legitimately feared for their lives. And the jury, who I would just want to point out, the jury was made up all of Americans, let the British soldiers off. And they got a he got not guilty verdicts for all but two soldiers who were convicted of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Now the Boston Massacre was one of many incidents that led to um, the independence movement, the Patriot movement, which resulted in the Continental Congress being um, summoned to Philadelphia to figure out how to resolve these problems with Great Britain. Um, John Adams was elected as one of the members of the Massachusetts Continental Congress. And he went to Philadelphia, described his fellow Continental Congressman as such an assembly has never before come together on a sudden in any party of the world. Here are fortunes, abilities, learning, eloquence, acuteness equal to ever met with in my life. I feel myself unequal to, these to this business. And in fact, John Adams was feeling very uh, inadequate and scared. It's like going to a new school for the first time. You got to meet all these new people. You don't know how they're going to react to you. But from the moment Congress began openly debating the concept of full independence, Adams was his most eloquent advocate, arguing as fiercely for the United States as he would for any other client. He argued that since they were being denied their rights as British subjects and treated like criminals anyway, why not take the next step and declare their separation from Great Britain altogether? On the shrewd advice of Benjamin Franklin, Adams included the richest and most powerful colony, Virginia, on the spear of the independence movement to make sure it did not look like a solely Massachusetts affair. He nominated George Washington lead the Continental Army. George Washington famously was a Virginian. He arranged for Richard Light Horse Henry Lee, another Virginian, to personally introduce the formal resolution for full independence. He insisted Thomas Jefferson uh, write the declaration himself. Regardless, his colleagues knew uh, his colleagues knew that uh, although Washington was more famous, uh, they called John Adams the Atlas of Independence. And that's what Ryan is drawing here. For all that he did for the cause of independence, they called John Adams the Atlas, who was this figure from Greek mythology who literally had the whole world on his shoulders. I mean, look, it's it's really tiring. I bet he's, he's really building up his abs there. And in fact, uh -huh. Adams was so uh, popular, despite what you may have heard, that he came in uh, second to George Washington in the first ever presidential election of 1788. 
uh, he was really the second most popular person in the country next to George Washington. And uh, this is after the revolution, after Adams spent almost a decade serving the country overseas as its uh, one of its foreign representatives. Uh, but there is a, a the American Constitution, as I think as you guys know, has evolved over the years, and and there are very sort of curious uh, uh, things about it. Uh, certainly, some very unpleasant things about it, like uh, slavery, uh, the fact women couldn't vote. But uh, there were other sort of stranger uh, things about it that that have been changed since since uh, our day, or were changed in our day. And uh, one of them is how you got to vice pre to become vice president. Now, uh, Ryan, could you show this me? This is one of my favorite things too. Also, of the of the, of the Constitution. Yes, is how you is, how vice presidents happen. That's right. And do you recall how we depict this in uh, in Action Presidents? In yes, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, who is I do one of our uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, Action President number three. Uh, is the first vice president that we talk about that becomes president. John Adams is, is the first vice president, period, who became president. But anyway, so the way the Constitution was originally drawn up was that you had two people running against each other, or however many people were running against each other, but the top two people who uh, get, the, get the most votes become president, vice president. The person who gets the most votes becomes president, and the second person becomes uh, vice president. So at the moment, you know, take 2020 as an example, assuming you have Donald Trump and Joe Biden running against each other, if we did presidential elections the way they did back in John Adams' time, whoever became president uh, would get the, would, would be whoever got the most votes. And then his enemy, his political rival, would become vice president. Now, John Adams uh, was not really George Washington's enemy at all. Uh, how And he served... Um, uh, pre president Washington very well as vice president for Washington's two terms in office. He did call the vice presidency the most insignificant office that ever the invention of man contrived or his imagination conceived. So he didn't really like being vice president very much. It was very boring. You had to sit in all the Senate sessions because you're the tie-breaking vote, but you can't actually participate in any uh, you can't actually participate in any debates. But uh, a person that he really, really did not get along with was the writer of the. Uh, of the Declaration of Independence, Mr. Thomas Jefferson. They ran against each other in the third ever presidential contest, which was the first time that you had parties. Adams represented the Federalist Party, and Thomas Jefferson uh, represented what was called the uh, Democratic Party at the time. And uh, Adams received the most votes because he was probably partly because he was associated with the, with the beloved George Washington. Jefferson received the second amount of votes, and so Jefferson became Adams's vice principal. The problem is, is that these are two enemies who are forced to work together, which sounds great in principle, but can you imagine Batman <laughs> having to deal with the Joker as his vice president, forcing them to get along? I mean, it, it seems like a good idea, seems like a noble idea, but very quickly, the United States of America realized this was not going to work yeah. at all. Just was not going to happen. Could have been pretty entertaining. Could have been entertaining to have President <laughs> Batman and Vice President Joker. But, you know, why, that would be like electing a game show host as president. So. I, that would be crazy. But uh, Jefferson yes. and uh, um, Adams did not get along. They were constantly undermining each other. Um, and it got really, really bad. And uh, it got so bad that uh, that Jefferson's encouraging people to criticize Adams government that uh, Adams uh, passed a series of laws that were very controversial at the time and remain controversial to this day. Uh, Jefferson really wanted America to get involved in the um, French Revolution, which was partly inspired by the American Revolution, but was much bloodier and more violent than ours, and Adams did not, uh, and worried about French citizens trying to uh, drag us into war. And so uh, he passed a couple uh, laws or had passed a couple laws um, and for drawing six this is beautiful Ryan well done thank you for drawing uh, for drawing number six um, I would like you to, you to draw a, an alien space alien okay. because one of the uh, perhaps in prison or running from the cops because uh, two of the laws that 
Adams uh, were, had passed during his administration were the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Sedition Acts made it basically illegal to criticize the government, uh, and a lot of Jefferson's allies got imprisoned as a result of that. Um, a lot of his uh, allies in the press. Very, very, what we consider today a very un-American law. And the other thing he, he passed is the Alien Act, which allowed French immigrants, uh, forced French immigrants to spend longer time to become citizens than everybody else. And sadly, uh, you know, this is not the first time, nor would it be the last, that immigrants in America would be persecuted because of where they came from. Uh, and it was definitely the French who caught the... Uh, caught it on the chin in this particular instance uh, because America was having troubles with France. Now, uh, Adams kept America out of war with France, which infuriated the uh, members of his own party. And uh, he also was persecuting Jefferson's party, which infuriated them. So as a result, in the election of 1800, uh, John Adams was uh, defeated by Thomas Jefferson, yes, his own vice president. Uh, in fact, uh, two people beat, that's how popular Adams had become at this point, was that he came in third, so he wasn't even up for being vice president, behind Aaron Burr and Thomas Jefferson. And as you may recall, if you've seen the musical Hamilton, this is the event that sort of ended up with the big duel between uh, Hamilton and Burr, because Hamilton ended up throwing his support behind Jefferson. Um, and Adams left off as kind of a depressed guy. He, he really worried that, uh, that his political career is over. Uh, he would be remembered poorly for his, uh, his, his accomplishments. Uh, his very famous quote was, uh, again, the history of our revolution will be one continued lie from one end to the other that Dr. Franklin smote the earth and outsprang George Washington. But Jefferson, you know, became, was the third president and, uh, his presence, he's generally considered to be pretty successful. Uh, he sponsored his boy in the West. He brought what's known as Louisiana Purchase into our country. Um, also, despite, you know, his feelings about France, managed to keep America out of a war. Uh, he did not persecute aliens, space aliens like this, uh, by throwing them in jail. Uh, but um, the two men became friends, and... Uh, continue corresponding to the point where towards the end of their lives they were best friends again and they were continuously writing and talking about the, the philosophy and history and the opinions of the things about going on during the day uh and believe it or not uh they both died on the same day which was july what? 4th july 4th 1826 so it was not just any same day it was the same day it was the anniversary of the signing of the declaration of independence I knew um, Jefferson had. I had no idea that John Adams had. Yep, as well. Wow, died on the same day. Uh, this is a. I feel. I feel for this alien, Ryan. I know I'm, he's having some hard times. I am concerned. Well, clearly, this alien did not have John Adams <laughs> defending him in court. Exactly. Working on the chain gang under the. Uh, I love it. Sun. So while we're while we're wrapping this up, let's do a little quiz. Remember, I said there were going to be some hilarious lies. Oh, wow. Uh, thrown in uh, along with the facts, some fake jokes to go with your real history. So, Ryan, I'm going to quiz you while you're wrapping okay. up, Mr. Alien here. All right, I'm just uh, asking. Uh, is it true, as we said, that John Adams was born on October 30th, 1735? October 30th? Yeah, no. I'm going to say that's a lie. Okay, that was the truth. Oh, no. He was, in fact, born on October 30th, 1735. Is it true that the name of John Hancock's smuggling ship was the Liberty? Um, I'm going to say yes. That was true. Well done. <laughs> was when, uh, when British troops opened fire uh, on uh, protesters in what was called the Boston Massacre, were they robots? Um, on the inside, I would say yes. It's not, it's not, it's not nice at all. But but I'm 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 sorry to say that in in, in the particulars of it being true or false, that's false. Uh, uh, the British military did not start using robots until 1976. Is that wrong? In 1770, they were in fact human beings. 
mm-hmm. human beings like you or me. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, did the Constitution say... No, sorry, did... Did John where did they call John Adams the Atlas of Independence? The Atlas of Independence. Yeah, that sounds uh, well. The Atlas. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you drew it and everything, and it was Let's totally see. right. Yeah. Uh, did I, I hope I didn't draw that for nothing? There you oh, go. Look at this, man. You you're like I'm really there. We go. The hunting. It's a quiz on this side too. Just trying to get a, get the right picture to show up. Um, um, let's see here. In the Constitution, the original Mm -hmm. U.S. Constitution, if you got second place votes, you became vice president. Is that true? That's true. And last but not least... Did the alien acts refer to actual space aliens? Yes. No, Ryan, oh, gosh. Geez. I mean, I know that's a lovely drawing of the space alien you got here, but in fact, uh-huh. I'm sorry to say the alien acts targeted French immigrants, immigrants from France. Well, so, why would they call them aliens? Why not just call them? I don't know. Well, I, I failed know. English. You know, Ryan, I... I write comic books, not the dictionary, so I don't. Okay. I'm not really here Fair to enough. describe uh, describe definitions. So uh, I think that uh, this has been an excellent, uh, spontaneous action president session. Well I think done. It pretty well, if only I could draw all of our comic books this quickly. I know, right? Then we would have <laughs> seven zillion billion trillion on the stands right now. But at the moment, as of June second, you will have two. And then uh, we don't have physical yeah. copies up in here in well, front of us. we can show this. But uh, on uh, a couple weeks after that, you're going to get the, the second two volumes, volumes three and four, which are Teddy Roosevelt and JFK. There they are. Boom, there they are. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate you sticking with us through the whole video. And yeah, uh, happy you. Memorial Day, even though it's not Memorial Day for you. But uh, we're going to go... Happy fourth of, early 4th of July. I don't know about you, Brian. I'm going to go sit in the sun. Yeah, I'm going to need to uh, go for a nice walk, I think. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, Get guys. Get out of here. Thank you. Oh.